Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here, hoping that you're all doing well. So we're going to talk about kind of a small change in 120.57 for electric vehicle supply equipment, but we have to talk about electric vehicle supply equipment when we're doing load calculations because there's more to it than initially meets the eye. So this change is on 120.57. However, there were changes in Article 625 for electric vehicles uh, that really need to be taken into, into account as well, and they, they really kind of click together. Remember how the code works, 90.3. 90.3 tells us that chapters 1 through 4 apply generally to all installations, and then chapters 5 through 8, used to be 5 through 7, 5 through 8, uh, supplement and modify the rules in chapters 1 through 8. So. Article 120 gives you the general requirements for load calculations, but Article 625 modifies those rules. So yes, we're going to talk about 120.57, but don't just take 120.57 on an island because if you have adjustable settings or if you have a a, uh, a PCS or energy management system, right, you can you can tweak the load calculations that we're going to talk about. So really, the more important part of this rule is found in Article 625, but I want to make sure we talk about this because some people are only going to look at 120.57 and ask the question, well, what about adjustable settings? What about PCS? You have to use the code holistically. All right, let's take a look at what we did here in 120.57. Still in Article 120, of course, branch circuit feeder service load calculations. 120.57 electric vehicle supply equipment. The load calculation for small EVSE was reduced. Okay, so this was added in the 2023 code because, I mean, I mean, fortunately, because before it was just, there was nothing, right? And if there's no guidance on load calculations, you know, here's, a, here's a, an, an interesting way to look at load calculations. All Article 120, all it does is allow you to use less than the nameplate, right? That, that's the whole concept of Article 120. If you were to just take the nameplate of everything to do your load calculation, lights, appliances, motors, whatever, if you were to just take the nameplate for the entire building and add it all together, that would be your load calculation, there would be no reason for Article 120, right? Article 120, what it really does is it reduces the load calculation. So 120.57 was added because people said, well, what do you do with electric vehicles? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what you did with them. You, you had to take the nameplate because it, it didn't say anything else, right? If it doesn't say anything, well, then you take the nameplate. So 120.57 was added to the 2023, but it also kind of had a, a flaw to it. So for EVSE, the nameplate is used if you have the nameplate. And if you don't have the nameplate, an assumed load of 7200 VA is going to be used. Okay, so what it said in the 2023 is you're going to have to use the nameplate or 7200 VA, whichever one is bigger. Well, that's dumb. Because if you have the nameplate and the nameplate is less than 7200 VA, why am I getting punished for that? Right? Why do I have to pretend that my EVSE is bigger than it really is? That's absurd. So, right, just using the nameplate would have been better, you know? So they change it to say, okay, listen, if you have the nameplate, you're using the nameplate. If you don't have a nameplate, which I don't know when you'd ever not have a nameplate, then you're going to assume 7200 VA, which is 30 amps at 240 volts, right? But take a look at this nameplate here. This one says that it's 30 amps continuous. Okay, well, at 12240, that would be 7200 VA. At single phase 12208, that would be 6240 VA. So it doesn't make sense to say, hey, use whichever one is bigger, this imaginary number, or the nameplate. But again, I want to really reiterate, you can't just use section 120.57 in a vacuum. Uh, you're going to have to use Article 625, which really allows you to reduce the load calculation for the service, the feeder, 
And, spoiler alert, now for the branch circuit as well, which is a big change in Article 625. I think 625.42, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, there you go. Not a huge change in this edition of the code, but I think I'd be foolish to just not talk about it because, look, calculating the load for EVSE kind of a big deal right now. We need to make sure we're doing it right. All right, so there's a nice short video for you. The next one we cover is going to be on 120.84 multifamily dwelling units, and this is one that I, I think you're going to get a kick out of when we get to uh, 120.84. It's a good change, but it's one of those that kind of makes you wonder, how, how did this not change 50 years ago? All right, hope to see you then. In the meantime, be safe, and we'll see you next video. Thanks.